Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about photography gear that isn't actually photography gear. So I'm going to be looking at all of the things that I use or the uh, bits and pieces that I have which enable me to get my job of photography done. Make turn to 240, sir. I was actually up to 75. 513 descending to 4000. So as you know I shoot landscape and aviation photography and there are certain things that I use for both and other things that I use just for landscapes and other things that I use just for aviation photography. So I'm going to split this into three sections and the first section will look at things that I use for both. All right, first up is this. This is a really thick down jacket. This one is made by North Face and I think this is absolutely fantastic. This keeps you so warm uh, regardless of the weather. I've been known to go out in this in frosty conditions and uh, sometimes snow uh, with just a t-shirt under underneath and this is it's like wearing a sleeping bag. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's not waterproof though so I do have a North Face jacket which this zips inside of and that kind of turns it into a really warm waterproof jacket so I don't often do that but uh, this is absolutely brilliant nice and toasty and keeps you warm especially when you're stood at the edge of an airfield uh, not moving very much uh, just standing around for a long periods of time so this is perfect for aviation photography in particular. Uh, on the other hand, I have this as well, which is a wrap version of a down jacket, and it's a lot thinner than this. So let's take a look at this one. So this is the wrap version. It's a lot thinner than the North Face version, uh, but the thing about this is that it's perfect for layering. So this one fits in, uh, in my camera bag in the little stuff sack quite nicely, and I can just take this out as and when I need it, um, just to keep warm. Uh, after a bit of a walk to uh, get to my location. Um, so this is good and this one is slightly more waterproof uh, than, well certainly waterproof compared to the um, North Face version. Uh, and this one dries really quickly as well so this is, uh, this is a high quality one. So uh, like I say the benefits of this is that you can layer up with this one and it stuffs small into my camera bag. Moving down to trousers, so these are some North, uh, sorry, some Crag Hoppers um, fleece lined trousers. So these, again, I mostly use just for aviation photography. Uh, again, because you're stood out in the uh, in the cold conditions in the winter quite often, not moving around very much and keeping warm, so you get cold quite quickly. And also, when you're on the edge of the airfield, uh, the wind can pick up across such a big open area so uh, so these help against the wind chill factor as well so these are brilliant and uh, like I say they're fleece lined and they keep your legs nice and warm in the cold windy winter conditions especially at the edge of an airfield next up on the subject of clothing are socks <laughs> um, these are seal skins waterproof socks um, now these are uh, they take a bit of getting used to. They're kind of they're all right once you've you've got them on and you've got used to them, but they feel a bit weird when you when you first put them on. But when you certainly when you pair them up with some walking boots or some uh, some winter shoes or whatever, uh, these are fantastic for keeping your your feet not only dry but nice and warm and toasty as well. So again, these are really good for being out and about in uh, uh, in the landscape when you're standing around or walking through muddy puddles or whatever to get to location or indeed if you're standing around like I've said before at the edge of an airfield waiting for activity to happen uh, these keep your feet nice and warm and dry. Next you've got to look after your fingers as well so Valorette photography gloves absolutely brilliant again these keep your fingers lovely and warm and they are specifically made for photography so these ones are uh, the Markhoff Pro 2.0. They make quite a big range of, of gloves. Uh, these are the ones that are most suited to me. They've got a nice grippy, grippy palm, uh, so you can grab hold of the camera. You hear that? They've got quite a rubberized uh, fingertips and, uh, and palm of the hand. And you've got like a little zip pocket on the back, so you can just put a, I don't know, a lens cap or something in there. I suppose it's got to be a fairly small one, but um, 
but the benefit of these is that when you want to operate the camera you just pull your fingertips out of those two fingers and your thumb and you can operate the camera while keeping the rest of your hands and the rest of your fingers nice and warm exactly the same on the other side and um, and they've also got a little little magnet that holds the fingertip back out the way on the thumb as well so these are really good uh, keep your fingers nice and warm and these are uh, the second actually set of set of photography gloves I've had uh, the first version um, they were okay but um, they weren't Valorette gloves uh, a different brand but these ones are really fantastic uh, they're not cheap but worth every penny uh, I'm a great believer in buying once and buying well and this is definitely uh, an example of that so Valorette photography gloves these are the Markov Pro 2.0s Oh, and on the subject of uh, Valorant Photography Gloves, while I bought those, I got a beanie from them as well. So th this is brilliant, keeping the ears warm. These are fantastic as well. Hand warmers, disposable hand warmers. These are just from the supermarket, a couple of pounds. And uh, I've got a few, few of these on standby, just in case. I keep one in my camera bag, one in my aviation bag, uh, and one in my um, little uh, glove bag as well. So they're really good. Another thing that I carry with me uh, quite often is my jet boil. Uh, this I've had for a few years now and it's fantastic for, for boiling up water for a quick cup of coffee uh, to warm up or just to uh, keep you going for a bit. Um, and, uh, and this goes neatly into the top of my landscape photography bag or if I'm out and about in the car with the uh, camera gear at uh, an airfield this just kind of goes in 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 the car um and uh, it doesn't need to fit in my uh, aviation photography bag because i've always got the car with me generally speaking so um yeah absolutely brilliant and it's got everything you need in that little package so and then you fill that with water and then you just basically turn it on So another thing that I carry around is sachets of coffee. Um, it's all pre-made. They come in boxes like this, um, just from the supermarket. Um, it's coffee, milk and sugar all in one sachet. So next up, we're going to talk about landscape photography specific uh, items. Now, I firmly believe that landscape photography is all about planning. Um, I'm a weekend photographer. Um, I do all my photography in my spare time and uh, it's for my own pleasure. So when I get onto location, I want to know exactly what I'm gonna be shooting. So therefore for me, landscape photography is all about the planning. So first of all, I'm gonna recommend uh, these books. They're made by PhotoView. And I've got quite a few of these now, so they do quite a, quite a big range and they're constantly growing and they're very well written. Um, fantastic pictures and it's essentially a location guide it tells you exactly when to go exactly where to go and gives you suggestions and I just use that as a starting point it just kind of gets me there and then when I get there I don't want to copy all the pictures in the book but it certainly gives me a good place to start so I've got one for the Lake District I've got one for East Anglia and I've got one for Northumberland, Wiltshire, Cornwall and Devon, London, the Peak District, Dorset and South Wales. They do a second volume for London and North Wales and Scotland, so many others. And they've just bought one out for Iceland, I think. Um, and the, the range is constantly growing. So uh, I heart, heartily recommend these. These are, these are fantastic books and they get you just into the right place. So next up is Ordnance Survey Maps. Now, gone are the days when you used to have hundreds of these things and paper everywhere. It's all done on an app now and it's so much easier. So this is the Ordnance Survey maps and I use these for uh, finding exactly where I can park and how I'm going to get to my location and exactly where things are. So Normanton Church, for example, is, uh, is shown on here and I know exactly what uh, public uh, access is like and it's just uh, a, a brilliant way of of having all those 
all of these with you in your pocket on your phone or on an iPad like this. And this is uh, this is a fantastic way of of seeing where you need to be on location for your next uh, landscape shoot. So next up is Photo Pills, which is an amazing app uh, for the phone. And this is something that I use all the time and mostly in the planner section. So I won't go through all of the bits and pieces in here, but in the planner section, you can certainly look at uh, different uh, your different locations and it gives you an idea about where the sun will be uh, at different times of the day. So you can precisely look at sunrise and sunset and how that's gonna affect your, uh, your shot and your location and you can make sure you can go back there at a specific time of the year or time of day for example and, uh, and it's just brilliant um, it gives you all sorts of different uh, times so sunrise and sunset times blue hour golden hour uh, the chances of visibility and things like that and it will tell you uh, all about uh, astrophotography um, all different pieces of information that are just so valuable to uh, to landscape photography it will give you information about the moon if you want the moon in your shot as well depth of fields hyperfocal distances depth of field tables all, all that sort of thing there's so much information in here uh, augmented reality for nighttime and things like that it's just brilliant for landscape photography for planning and for dealing with things while you're out and about like long exposures and it's called photo pills highly recommended oh on that note i always keep the sunrise and sunset time switched on on my phone so that i know when that's going to be when i'm out and about just in case so uh yeah that's always there it's good uh, good little tip to have on your apple watch Next up is another app that I use called Clear Outside. This is really useful again for landscape photography because you want to know where the cloud is and how high it's going to be and what your chances are for a sunrise and sunset, uh, lighting conditions uh, and cloud and all that sort of stuff. Visibility tells you when it's going to be foggy, what the chances are for fog and things like that. And, um, and that's really useful. Again, you've got sunrise and sunset times, uh, what the moon is doing, all sorts of things like that. And it will even tell you when the space station is passing over. Uh, there you go. So uh, that's going to be passing over at nine o'clock. Uh, what's that tomorrow night? But yeah, it's, uh, it's brilliant. So that's, uh, that's perfect for finding out. And it's quite reliable too, but perfect for finding out what sort of cloud conditions you're going to get and the chances are for good lighting for sunrise or sunset. Another app I use is called Windy and this is just general weather conditions but you've got all sorts of different overlays uh, that you can add on to the weather map so clouds, um, rain, uh, thunder as well so thunder and lightning gives you a good idea about where the thunderstorms might be if you if you're into that sort of thing uh, obviously at the moment France is the way to place to be uh, not the UK um, but all sorts of different layers that you can put on and uh, this is just a free version but also it gives you a good idea about what uh, what the waves are going to be doing so if you're into coastal photography and seascapes that's a, a good indication as well. So all in all, another really good app. And then when you do get out onto location, first thing in the morning or last thing at night, you need to be able to find where you're going. So I use a Petzl head torch and um, brilliant for finding your way in the dark when you wanna get out onto location before sunrise. Really good for first thing in the morning. All right, moving on to aviation photography next. And I find that just being in the know is absolutely essential for aviation photography. So I've signed up and joined uh, many uh, aviation related uh, Facebook groups so I can be kind of first to know um, where aviation action in, is happening especially rare kind of things so uh, so I always find that other people are always the first to know these things and they tend to share them on Facebook groups so I'm with the Scampton group the Coningsby group uh, Langan Heath Milton Hall all the all the airfields around close to me and uh, and and that's the place where I find out all the information and as soon as something interesting is going to happen that's where I'm headed 
Uh, and then once you are at these places, so for example, Lake and Heath Mildenhall, uh, a brilliant website to use is called Thunder and Lightnings. And that gives you a location guide um, about where to uh, position yourself, where to stand, where to photograph from, uh, for all the different air bases around the UK. Uh, and again, that's a really useful source of information and uh, also radio frequencies as well. So we'll come on to that in a minute. And then once you're actually at these airfields, a good thing to do is to take your iPad with you. So I always take my iPad when I'm out and about and I use a website called 360 Radar. Now I do subscribe to it. It's probably the one website that I've found that's most useful for tracking military aircraft. And if you know where the aircraft are and where they're likely to go, then you can make sure you're in position at the right place at the right time to be able to photograph that aircraft. For example, if I'm out at Lake and Heath and a load of F-15s go off, chances are I might be able to track them on here. I certainly track the Typhoons out of Coningsby. Um, so it's worth looking at. So 360radar.co.uk. Um, there are a couple of others. One is ADSB Exchange, and you've obviously got Flight Radar 24. Uh, but Flight Radar 24 is mostly just for tracking civil aircraft. It's very rare that you see any military aircraft on there. But personally, I use 360radar.co.uk. Once you're in location and the aircraft are up flying around, or not as the case may be, they might be still on the airfield waiting to, uh, to go, one of these is useful. It's an airband radio or an air, airband scanner. Uh, it's just a receiver, you can't transmit on it, but um, this is uh, a brilliant way of listening to the aircraft and finding out where they are, when they're likely to take off, uh, first indications of them starting up for takeoff or first indications for them coming coming back into, the, uh, into land or running circuits, that kind of thing. So an airband scanner, absolutely brilliant piece of kit and... Uh, all the frequencies and things like that they can be found online and a good place to start is thunder and lightnings which is one of the websites i mentioned just a short while ago and then when you are ready to shoot the aircraft uh, one of these is quite useful it's a black rapid strap now i've been using this for ages but the problem with shooting aircraft is that you're often standing around for long periods of time and you're using quite heavy equipment so this is my 7D Mark II with the Tamron 150 to 600 G2 on it. It's quite a heavy piece of kit and to be holding this all the time is can get quite tiring. So the Black Rapid strap is basically a shoulder strap which enables you to carry the camera over your shoulder. So you've got like a carabiner on here and you get a, a, a loop which figures into the tripod mount and you just secure that and you just carry the tri the camera around like that until you need need to use it. Next up, it's a spotter's book. Uh, I'm not a spotter, but one of these is quite useful. Um, it's just for general interest, really. Uh, it's just basically the aircraft registration. It tells you exactly what it is and where it's based or where it's from. Um, it's just general interest, but it's a little book that I keep in my camera bag. Okay, coming to the end now. So one last thing that I carry around with me uh, when I'm doing my aviation photography. Uh, well, I don't carry it around with me. I usually just put it in the car, and that's my iPad. And the reason I carry that around is because there's a period of inactivity, which could be, in some cases, maybe three hours, um, something like that. So you end up with quite a bit of time on your hands. So what I tend to do is take my iPad with me and a little pouch with cables. So what I can do is use, I can charge my iPad in the car and this is a USB connection kit. So uh, this is the, the lead that came with my 7D Mark II. So it's got a, a weird USB three kind of socket at one end and a normal USB on the other end. So I connect those like this. That goes into the iPad, that goes into the camera. And then what I do is I download my pictures uh, or select few pictures, what look to be the best, onto my iPad. 
and into Lightroom CC and I can start editing on the go and because this is connected through my phone to 4G uh, I can then upload them onto the cloud and by the time I get home they'll be on my computer ready to uh, to continue editing or um, archive, print them out, whatever I want to do with them once I get back here. So that's really good. And then if I've had enough of that, Netflix. Well, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found uh, something uh, of interest in the, uh, the kit that I've shown you. Hopefully you can use that to uh, to your advantage when you're out and about shooting either aircraft or landscapes. So thanks for joining me, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you again on the next one.